The world of blockchains is rapidly shifting the way we can use data, but it also has its limits. This is where Pinata is going to change the world by making it easier to refer to data from blockchains. We are based out of Omaha, Nebraska. The fact that we are able to exist in what's typically referred to as flyover country, I think is a great example of how decentralized this entire space is. I'm Kyle Tutt, co-founder and CEO of Pinata. I am Matt Ober, and I am the CTO and co-founder of Pinata. Pinata was born out of a necessity that we saw. We realized that all of this data that all of our projects needed couldn't be stored on chain because it was just too big. And blockchains are not good at storing a lot of data. Blockchains are good at trustless verification of data, but there needs to be a conduit for anyone to easily connect their off-chain data to the blockchain. All of our projects needed this, and we built some internal stuff for ourselves, and then we said, hey, well, why can't we solve this for everybody else as well? And then we decided to turn what we had built into what is now known as Pinata. We are a pinning service that enables applications and creators and individuals to interface and interact with blockchains in a simple and intuitive way. With Web3, we're allowing people to take their data wherever they want it to be, whether it's in their devices, whether it's on some cloud server somewhere. You're still gonna be able to know that your data is exactly what you're expecting it to be. Pinata allows the owner of any type of data to utilize their data without constraints. We give the ability to actually own the future of that data, and that allows them to transfer it between different people, to earn income from it, to restrict access to it, those types of things, uh, whereas traditional web technology today does not enable this. Pinata uses IPFS as really our secret sauce. We like to think of IPFS as the peanut butter to blockchain's jelly. We use Go IPFS, we use JS IPFS, and we use IPFS gateways. This concept of the content identifier, or the CID for short, that is the core underlying piece that makes all of this work. If all of these different pieces of the decentralized stack are all speaking the same language of the CID, that means that we can communicate and that we can verify content and data because we're all speaking that same language. IPFS really connects everything and everybody in a way that no other technology or protocol has done in the past. With things like NFTs, you are basically creating an origin story for that piece of data and you can track its history from the moment it was created forever. Basically, the way we look at NFTs, it's just the way to show ownership or rights to data. We always use this analogy of the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa may not actually be the real Mona Lisa. When a piece of art is turned into an NFT, you're gonna know who owned it, where it resided, and you'll also know because of that CID that we keep talking about that that data is exactly what you're expecting it to be. So what we get really excited about is that IPFS can allow any kind of data, any kind of files to exist, and then you can attach that uh, to an NFT. So NFTs can be literally anything. Being able to shape the way that the, the internet is evolving is something that is truly exciting.